Hey everybody, this is Tammy with Unfiltered Equestrian. Welcome to the first day of our 14 days of free training videos with Unfiltered Equestrian. Um, today we have a question from a 4-H leader, Christy Trupka, asking about uh, spring conditioning for her uh, 4-H horse kids. So we're gonna address that today. And Sid and I are each gonna ride a horse and show you some of the things that um, we do when we're uh, conditioning in the spring. So uh, the first thing that I like to say is, anytime you're talking about conditioning horses, um, it, it really depends on what you're doing with them. Um, here, we go by a rule of uh, conditioning for a week for every week the horse has been off. So uh, our horses are never um, off more than four or five weeks consecutively. Um, we do like to give them four or five weeks off in the winter just to rest and recover. But uh, many people are leaving their horses off three and four months. And if you are doing timed events or jumping or anything above you know, first level dressage, you're looking at a week for every week they're off, minimum 90 days conditioning. So we're, we're gonna show you some things to do with horses that are really fat and out of shape. And those of you that have been able to ride fairly consistently, even a day or two a week through the winter are not gonna have as long of a time to bring your horses back to full fitness. So um, I'm also going to be putting up a blog on this topic by Friday. Um, and if you have questions on that, um, please comment here or on hearttoranch.com on the Unfiltered Equestrian blog. All right, here we go. Okay, so uh, our wonderful demo rider here today is Sydney Anderson riding her Warm Blood Gilding uh, TW on Star. Um, so Sid is going to demonstrate an exercise we learned from the fabulous Janice Lenan. Um, we've clinicked with her. We, we are excited to have her back to Heart Tea Ranch again. But this has been a great exercise for getting your leg in the proper position. And I'm actually gonna shift here just a little bit so we can see it better. So we just call it the Janice exercise, right, Sid? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna walk through it and describe what Sid's doing. Um, first thing, Eyes forward and up into the two point. <clears throat> okay, so you notice that Sid's leg is still in contact with the horse. And Sydney, let's, I'm gonna shift back here. Now show me what you shouldn't do. Locking your knees out and pushing, yep, pushing your leg away from the horse. Go ahead and close your leg back correctly again. Perfect. So two point, up on your toes. Stretch down through your heel, chin to the mane, all the way down. There you go. And back up to two point and back to sitting. And her leg falls right under her seat. Okay. Now, one of the things that people do, so we're going to do that again, Sid, and when you, I want you to swing your leg forward, you know, like we're not like supposed to. Yep, at okay. the end of it go back into a chair seat so okay so let's try that whole thing again but do it wrong at the end two point up on your toes down through your heel chin to the mane slowly back up yeah okay so that's what you don't want to do so now show us correct <clears throat> two point up on your toes down through your heel chin to the mane quietly back down with your leg in place. That's how you do it, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to show everybody is how to get a good leg position in your two point. Okay, so now Sid, let's go out on half the arena at the walk and let's have a good medium walk. So a medium walk means this horse is going to be tracking up at least, depending on the athletic ability of the horse that you're on, they need to at least cap. That means that the hind foot is, um, the toe of the hind foot is touching the heel of 
the front foot track, okay? Now this horse is athletic, he's gonna over track, okay? He's gonna either step in his track or over track. When you are conditioning in the spring, Sid, what's the most important thing about conditioning in the spring? That's right, getting your butt in the saddle and doing it. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're not on your horse, you're not gonna get in condition. So walking is big. Sid's already been um, walking this horse for about 10 minutes. Then we're gonna go to what we um, refer to in English disciplines as uh, trot sets. And yeah, we're not gonna be cantering this horse today. Now he's fit, but we're gonna pretend we're just pulling him out of the field from having the entire winter off. It's walk trot people because they're not fit enough to canter right now. So one of the ways that um, you can make sure you're not overdoing it with your horse, um, and we could get into respiration rate and all that kind of stuff, but I'm gonna keep it a lot more simple for you. You've probably been sitting on your couch a lot this winter too, unlike Sid who's been riding two horses after school <laughs> four days a week at least all the way through the winter, okay? Um, we're gonna two point this thing. So uh, you're gonna do a 10 minute warm up. Then you're gonna go trot for one minute. Now we're gonna not quite, quite probably do a whole minute here. We'll see, but um, cause I'm gonna try to move this video. Along. Okay, so Sydney has had a 10 minute walk warm up on OnStar. And um, now we would move into our walk trot sets. So when these horses, this horse is fit, he's been ridden all winter, but when your horses have had all winter off, you can't expect them to go cantering around, okay? And a lot of people like to canter or lope because it's easier to sit. So Sid, we're gonna do um, a minute of two point at the trot. And I want you to go all the way to mid arena so you're not any closer than where you are right now. So whenever you're ready, you'll do a nice transition to the trot and into the two point. Okay, so our horses are trained to go to the contact, lift their back. These are all things we're gonna discuss in a different video, but um, in a nutshell, the, the better that your horse is using his body, watch your tempo, the more effective your trot sets are gonna be. So you're probably, if you've been as much of a couch potato as your horse all winter, you're probably not gonna be able to hold this very long correctly. So a minute is probably all you're gonna be able to do. It's a good way to not overface your horse, is if you hold this position for 60 seconds, then you're gonna walk for a minute or two, and then you're gonna do it again. And I would do 10 sets of this. So that should equal about 30 minutes. If you're doing two minutes a walk, one minute a trot. And Sid's doing a really good job of keeping this horse lightly on the contact, stretching out to the bit and um, having a consistent tempo. And we're gonna talk about that in future videos. Okay, so now you're gonna sit the trot and make a nice walk transition. Everything we do is about quality. Good. And now she would walk for two minutes, okay? And we're not gonna go a full two minutes here. We're, we're just gonna do a demo. So let's reverse and walk, making a good reverse. Everything you do should be quality. So. Don't just jam your horse down to the walk. Don't just crank his head around and turn. Make everything meaningful. And yeah, we're dressage riders, so we're control freaks, but um, we want these horses to be obedient and mindful of how they use their body, and, and we're mindful on how we use our aids, okay? As you go along with your fitness routine, you should, I would do that um, 10 sets in 30 minutes. So the minute of trot, two minutes of walk for a week. Now that means um, at least four days in that first week. Second week, up that to two and two, two minutes walk, two minutes trot. Um, see where they're at. The third week, you should do two minutes walk, three minutes trot. And if they're not ready, do another week of two and two, okay? In the fourth week of conditioning, 
you could add a little bit of canter or lope, um, and I mean a minute. So you would be built up to at least three minute sets of trot. Again, you're gonna do these sets for at least 30, 40 minutes before you are built up to 30, 40 minutes before you're cantering. Um, I'm going to post a blog post about sets and how to develop them and give you a first sample uh, 90 day set. Um, and it's a guideline. Always go by your horse's condition. Do they have any underlying condition or lameness issues? Um, and let's go back to the trot, Sid. <clears throat> You'll be mindful of, of the response your horse is having. A lot of people are like, oh, I love Cavaletti. That's great. So do I. But when my horses are not fit, I'm riding them at least 60 days of flat work fitness before I add Cavaletti. Um, and that's just me, you can injure them. I see a lot of people teaching Cavaletti clinics who um, are not training riders how to go over them correctly. Um, they're over facing them with either too many rails on the ground or too high or um, the horses aren't fit enough. And I just cringe when I see it because Done correctly, Cavaletti is a wonderful tool. Done incorrectly, it can really be damaging. So keep that in mind. So of course, Sid has a really solid seat. She's a strong rider. And this horse is, um, he's a young horse, but this is not a new thing for him. Okay, so let's go back to the walk. Good. Okay, so come in, Sid, and tell us what a week of conditioning would look like um, around your place. So me and my mom both condition since we both ride. And we get up around 3.30 to 4, depending on how many we have to ride. And we go out and we have a pretty big place where there's lots of hills because we do a lot of hill work. So we'll get out, tack up, and then go out for about an hour because our horse is a little bit more fit than others. So we go out for about an hour and then do our trot sets and get them in shape and then go on to the next one and then next one. And, and you guys implement hill work, right? Yeah. What are some of the things that you pay attention to when you're working on hills up and down? I make sure that they're up under me, that they're not just, you know, out doing nothing, that they're not falling out the back, back end, um, that they're not going so fast that they're going to trip either going uphill or downhill. Tempo, um, right? Tempo Can, really important. Mm -hmm. And that they're actually paying attention to my aids and that they're listening to my half halt, listening to my leg, because that's really important when you get out and about. Because if something ever does happen and your horse has no rideability, then you're kind of screwed, so. That's right, that's yeah. right. Awesome. Okay, so um, what's your plan? I know this was just a demo, but what's your plan for today with him? This is our um, Monday. He's had a few days off because it was cold. So what's the rest of your workout today gonna look like? Today, probably just getting him back in the groove. Um, making him listen to my aids, working on a little bit more of collection, listening to my seat. Um, he's pretty good about it, but sometimes he can be a four-year-old. Lateral, lateral work? Yep, and lateral work. Um, working on having him cup, come up under and not be so heavy on the forehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks to Sydney and OnStar for being our demo rider today. And now I guess uh, we'll move on to me. <laughs> okay. So this is HTR Ringo. This is my Percy George dressage horse. He's a thoroughbred Oldenburg that was bred by Michael Larson um, from Junior Scat, Montana. So um, I'm going to demonstrate a few things that you can do to work on your own skills and fitness while you're getting your horse fit, okay? So no matter what um, strength level your horse has,
has what condition level. He can do all of this stuff, Wakka and their armies for Wakka too. Okay? So uh, we're going to assume right now that your horse is actually fit enough to do Wakka sounds. Um, first thing that I like to do <coughs> is really concentrate on tempo. And of course, here it's imperative in our program that the horses um, use their body correctly. But again, um, you may not know all about that right now, so we'll talk about it in future future videos. So for right now, we let you have a little look see here. This is an example of a really, really hot horse. So I do this kind of work to get him to forget that we're working. Um, he can tend to anticipate and get fired up, so it's important for him to learn to not be that way. I don't try to coddle him and say, oh, I'm going to avoid it because he might get hot. No, nope, they need to learn to not be hot, to stay in the tempo that I ask them to be in. So, we're going to go to the trot. And I promise I'm going to try not to go down the rabbit hole here because I get off on tangents. So, <clears throat> first off, we have a nice trot tempo.
you a few more little ideas about things that you can do for your own fitness and your horse's fitness. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for episode two. So I hope you guys enjoyed our little impromptu um, spring conditioning webinar. Um, a couple of things to follow up with. First off, I can't stress it enough to always listen to your horse, okay? So you're gonna evaluate them during your workout, after your workout, look for swelling in legs, soreness in their back, um, unevenness in um, their gait. If you're leading them in from the field the next day and they're off, then you need to reevaluate your conditioning program and um, potentially consult a, vet a veterinarian, depending on if you think it's lameness related or just muscle soreness. Um, of course, we use PEMF, on all of our horses. We also do massage and chiropractic on a regular basis. For us, it's not or, it's and. All of these modalities work together to um, keep our high performance sport horses healthy. Um, I know that's not in everyone's budget and that's okay. You can learn how to do some um, stretching and massage on your own and just pay attention to your horse. When you're conditioning, make sure that you're not asking horses to extend their gates beyond where they can hold their balance. So what we might be able to do with dressage horses that are trained um, consistently to lengthen and shorten their fit may not be what your quarter horse is going to be able to do his first few weeks out of the field. doesn't mean they can't learn to do it. It means you really need to pay attention to their balance to um, prevent them from injuring themselves. So please check in on hearttoranch.com on the blog and we'll have some more information about conditioning. And thanks for joining us on the Unfiltered Equestrian.